Hello, today I'm going to teach you how to deploy your first Rails application. If you're just beginning to learn Ruby on Rails, you may find that deploying to Heroku, if you're even familiar with it, isn't quite as simple as pushing your Git repo up to Heroku, especially if you have a database and maybe you're using the default SQLite database, there will be lots of errors that you may have to do a good bit of Googling to figure out, at least for the first time. So we're gonna do this from scratch. We're going to build a very, almost nothing app just for the purposes of deploying it. So I will open up terminal and we'll create rails new and we'll call this maybe snippets. A project called snippets for storing code snippets. Now you can see right here, it's gonna run bundle install and this will make sure that we're using all the necessary gems. Now that's finished, so I'm gonna CD into the project. And now why don't we run the site to see if it is up and running because I will assume that you are relatively new to rails. So we can either run rails server or Rails S, or you can even make Rails a shortcut using uh, R. So I often do RS, but it's the same thing. Now we can see that's up on WebRick running at 3000. So let's view this in the browser. And there we are, you are writing Ruby on Rails. So now we have a new project set up. I'm gonna press Control C to exit out of here. Now we need to get Git up and running because that's how we're going to work with Heroku. So we will run Git init. I'm going to assume that you have Git installed. If not, just search for install Git on the web and you'll have pretty easy instructions. So we'll create a new Git repo and I'm gonna add every single file to the staging area. And then I'm gonna run commit, or we could combine the two by doing commit am, and that means add everything at the same time. But for now, we're gonna commit with the message first commit. That looks good. So the next step is we need to get up and running with Heroku. So we need to gem install Heroku. Now this will assume that you've installed Ruby gems, but I assume you have. And now we can see here, we've successfully installed Heroku. So we can create a new Heroku project by running Heroku, and this will give us a list of all of our options. If you need to work with any of these, you can run Heroku help and the name. So if I need help with the database, I can run Heroku help DB. Now in this case, we wanna create. So I'm gonna run Heroku create. Now, if we do not assign a subdomain, Heroku will randomly generate one. In this case, we get floating river 4552. Now that will just take a few seconds. And the next step will be to push to Heroku. However, if you have not yet created an account with Heroku, go ahead and do that right now by visiting heroku.com and clicking sign up right here. And it just takes a few steps. Once you've done that, come back. And now we've committed all of those files. So now we're going to push them to Heroku. Get push Heroku. We're gonna push to Heroku, and what branch are we pushing? Our default master branch. So right now, this the very first time, it needs to upload all of the gems, so this probably will take anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute. So I'm going to pause and restart when all of this has finished. There we are, and now you can see it has finished installing all of those gems, and it has launched it at this URL. So you can either copy this, or there is a shortcut Heroku open and now we'll open the website in your default browser. In this case, it will be Chrome for me. There we are, and now you can see as easy as that, we are running our website. Nothing's really happening, but it is stored on the web and you can give this URL to anyone. And later you can rewrite this URL because of course you don't want floating river as your domain name. Okay, so this is where most introductory deploy to Heroku tutorials end, but we need to get into a database because that's where you're gonna find some errors for the first time. So now the first thing, we don't want this default index.html page. So that's the first step is to remove it and that is stored within the public directory. Remove public index.html. However, this is also still in the Git repo, so I'm gonna remove it from Git as well, public index.html. Good, the next step is we could create a scaffold, but I noticed when I was learning, it's pretty funny. Uh, the scaffold is always the, the quick way to show how to work with Ruby on Rails, but then the teacher will tell you that most developers don't ever use the scaffold generator. So it's a little odd. Why don't we do it manually? So we will create a model by doing Rails generate, or we can shorten that to G for generate model, and we'll call this snippet. We're gonna have a table called snippets, so the model needs to be singular at snippet, and this is gonna be really simple. We'll give it a title of a string, and the snippet itself, which is going to be set to text, that way they can add as much text as they want. So I'm gonna hit enter, and this is not going to create the database itself, but it's gonna create Ruby code, or a migration that will then be run, that will create the SQL. As you can see here, it's created some tests for us, and more importantly, it's created the migration
version file. So if we want to take a look at this, I'm going to open this directory within my code editor of choice. And if I open up db migrate create snippets, you can see that Rails G model created this file for us. And we created a table called snippets, and we're going to have a field called title and snippet. Now Rails will also tack on any timestamps, and that will be published at and created at. So you never need to deal with that on your own. So remember though, this hasn't created the table just yet. It's only created a migration file. We need to now run this, which will turn this Ruby code into SQL. So we can do that by typing rake db migrate. And now you can see it's created the table snippets. Next, let's add some dummy data. So I'm going to enter the Rails console by typing Rails console, or again, Rails C. And this will then allow us, in addition to working with Ruby, we can manipulate the models that we have. So if, for example, we created a snippet model, if I type snippet, you can see here are the fields that are available. So why don't we create a new snippet? Snippet.create, and we will give it a title. So we could do it like this, title, my title, this is kind of a new way. It's more similar to what you would do with JavaScript or the traditional way doing a simple title. Both are fine. And the next one, snippet div hi. Now I'm going to hit enter and you can see that created a SQL query, insert into snippets, et cetera, et cetera. So now you can see if we run snippet.all, this will run select star from snippets essentially. Now we have one snippet. Good. That's all we need to work with here. The next step is we need to display this on the page. So let's go ahead and create a controller. Rails G for generate controller. And this is usually going to be the plural form of what you named the model. In our case, we named the model snippet. So we should name our controller snippets. Now, after snippets, we can give any methods and views that we want to create. In our case, I'm just going to create an index, and that will also create the index.html.erb view. So if we take a look, it created a SAS file for us. It created the view, and it also created the snippets controller file. And one last thing it did is it created within the routes a single route to snippets index. However, we want to be working with a more of a restful pattern, so I'm going to change this to resources snippets. However, for our application, it doesn't really matter that much. Okay, next I'm going to go to controller, or you can quickly browse to it. In Sublime, I can do that on the Mac by pressing Command P and then typing snippets controller. Here you can see that the generator automatically added this for us. So all we're going to do is snippet.all. However, we want to store this in a variable, of course, so we'll store it within snippet. But again, we want to be able to access this from our view, so we need to make sure that we make this an instance variable. All right, that's all we need to do here. Next, we're going to open up our view, snippets index.html. And for now, why don't we just run through the snippets? So we'll say snippets.each do, and that'll be represented by snippet. And then within here for now, why don't we display snippet.title within here? All right, so now let's run this locally to see if we made any mistakes. So I will bring back the terminal and run Rails server or Rails S. And now you can see, sure enough, that is bringing in that file from the database. And then within pre-tags, we'll do snippet dot snippet as well. Reload, and there we go. Okay, so now we know we do have a database. It's a SQLite database, but this is working. So let's see what would happen now if we try to push this up to Heroku. Close out my server, and now I'm gonna update. So I'm gonna say git add period or commit a m and we'll say added snippets model and controller and next as we did before we're going to push to heroku the master branch and once again this will just take a few seconds but as you'll see we're going to find some errors so let's see what we get and i'm going to reload the page and we're getting an error so let's make sure it's not just a lack of a route so we're going to go to snippets and still we're getting an error so how can we debug this and we can come back to terminal and go to Heroku logs, and this will spit out everything that's going on with our website. Generally, you wanna look for red. So what we can see right here though is connection not established. This seems to be the problem. It can't connect to our database. So remember, we've only uploaded the files to Heroku, but we need to run DB Migrate on Heroku as well. So let's try that and we can do Heroku. Now, if you're using Cedar, you would do Heroku run, but in this case, we'll keep it to Heroku rake db migrate and that will create the tables on heroku so we think so let's try to run this and now we can see it's been aborted please install this different database adapter and that's because again heroku doesn't work with sqlite it works with 
this database. So now we need to update this. And presumably in future projects, you would want to make sure you're using this database for development and production. But in this case, we'll only use it for production. First step is to go to our gem file. And at the very bottom, let me adjust the syntax here. We're going to switch to group production because this is only going to apply for production and we want to be using the PG gem which will give us access to that database. So now we need to run bundle install and we can do it for everything or just run it for production environment. In this case let's just run bundle just to make sure that everything is installed and up and running and that'll just take a second or two. There we go and that will also have created a new gem file.lock. So let's go ahead and update Heroku. So we're going to add gem file and also add gem file.lock. And now we're going to commit those files with the message pg adapter gem. Finally, we'll run git push or git push Roku master. Now, because we have updated this gem file, it's going to need to run bundle again. There we go. That's finished. So now let's see if it's working. Reload the page and we're still getting an error. So once again, we have to go to Heroku logs and eventually you'll figure out how to group all of this. So you're not doing this over and over, but the first time you'll definitely run into lots of errors. So let's check the logs again and we can see relation snippets does not exist because remember we haven't migrated the database on Heroku. Let's do that now. Heroku rake db migrate. And now this is going to create the tables in that new database. There we are. And we can see create tables. Well, now maybe it will work. Reload the page. Nope, still not working. So let's check the logs again. And now the error is, and this may be specific to Rails 3.1. I'm not sure, but it does seem fairly common. Application.css isn't pre-compiled. So if you need to fix this, you can run bundle, exec, rake, assets, and we're gonna go ahead and pre-compile them. And what that's gonna do is it's going to create the, uh, the flat CSS and .js files. Next, we'll add those to Git. And now you can see all of these files, .js, CSS, it takes all of those SAS files and pre-compiles them. And now once again, git push Heroku master. So what you'll learn is lots of these steps you'll, you'll instinctively do for new projects. But again, the very first time you'll, you'll see this read a lot until you figure out how to use it. So we reload the page and good, we're not getting any errors, but it's not the same as locally. And that's because remember, locally we're using a SQLite database, but for production, we're using a different database. So of course it's not going to have those same rows set up. So we need to figure out what if you really need to get the data from SQLite to this new one. Okay, well, let's figure out how to do that. And the first thing I'm gonna do, which is unrelated, is we'll go up to routes and let's change the route. And we're gonna make that go to index so that it will load the snippets index view by default. And next we wanna push all of the local data that we have in this SQLite database and push it up to Heroku. And Heroku mix is pretty easy. It will automatically do it for you if you run Heroku DB push. However, before this works, you need to make sure that you have the taps gem installed. Gem install taps. And once that's all set up, we run Heroku db colon push, and that's gonna push that data up to Heroku. To proceed, we just have to retype that. And now you can see it is taking all that schema and it's pushing it up to our Heroku DB. And now you can see it created two tables and two records. If we reload the page, there we go. So now we are getting the exact same thing. So of course, in our very simple application, you might wanna do something where if there is no snippets, it says no snippets returned, but that's really unrelated to this tutorial. So yeah, there's a lot of steps you have to follow the first time, especially if you're relatively new to Rails and new to working with Heroku. I found that personally, I needed to do quite a bit of Googling to figure out these. So refer to the written portion of this tutorial for the commands and for future reference. So for more tips and tutorials, always follow the Touch Plus network. My name's Jeffrey Way, and I will see you later.